So one of the cool things about this new approach we're taking, moving past the experts to finding people who are telling this cool story with their lives and engaging these topics is we just don't even know they're doing it. So often we see the headlines and they're negative and we think about what's wrong with our city maybe. This is an opportunity to celebrate some amazing people that we're living with in our city. And so it's going to be an awesome journey to just keep hearing that story over and over and over and being inspired and encouraged and challenged to be more like them in some way, you know, and, and what's your unique contribution to making Evansville a place where everyone flourishes. Our guests today, we're really excited to have Maricela de la Para. I hope that I said her name uh, correctly. I've been practicing it and trying it, uh, but she, uh, we're really excited to have her. She has been in Evansville for a couple of years now and has really fallen in love with our city in a way that is exciting to see and uh, kind of uh, kind of helps you see uh, your city in a different perspective whenever you have somebody coming in from the outside and uh, experiencing the city and and just marveling at all these things. Uh, it, and so that's, that's going to be really fun to hear. Um, but she has uh, done a lot to sort of develop um, this sort of bring out the multicultural aspect of Evansville and really help people to see that there are a lot of different cultures represented in our city, which is maybe not something that Evansville is known for or that you think of when you think of Evansville, but she's been uh, just really having a blast kind of identifying where those different pockets of culture exist in our city and helping them to connect, helping people to uh, celebrate and enjoy those things. And so we're really excited to hear from her today. Yeah, she really inspired me to just check out different cultures. And so we hope you as listeners are inspired as well. Thank you for joining us today. We're so excited my to be pleasure. able to talk to you. It's my pleasure. I've listened to your podcast and I love them. I'm so glad. Oh, wonderful. I'm so glad. Thank you. Well, first, why don't you just introduce yourself Certainly. and tell us a little bit about you and how long you've been here. Of course. And my name is Maricela de la Parra, and I've been in Evansville for about three and a half years. My husband and I moved here uh, because of his job, and I really didn't know what I would expect. You know, for most of our adult married life, we lived in, in San Diego, but we're originally from Mexico. We grew up there. Uh, so we've always lived in a big city. So, you know, I've, I've got to tell you a story. My husband said, you know, don't worry about it. It's just going to be one year, two years max. And two weeks into living here, we start falling in love with Evansville. We, we love it. You know, we were thinking of retiring here. So, um, that's how much it's impressed us. That's great. We love to hear that yeah. about our city. So that's awesome. Yeah. So, well, I want to know specifics. If after two weeks, what what in that time frame did you say I love Evansville? What made you love Evansville? Okay. Uh, people are so welcoming. You know, I I can understand a lot of people. It's the, the city is flourishing. We're in the middle of this growth. Uh, and there are a lot of people coming in from different parts of the world, even not just the United States, parts of the world. And uh, people really don't know that they haven't been exposed to other cultures. And yet I found that most people, not all, unfortunately, but most people are so welcoming. They, they want to know, you know, what do you do to celebrate this in your country? You know, how do you eat this in your country? And, uh, you know, I, my husband and I started getting invited to uh, talks at churches, uh, different gatherings, you know, to talk about our country. And then the next week they'd invite somebody from another country. And I thought, wow, you know, this is so cool. Uh, when you said, you know, what happened in two weeks, we, my husband was, was trying to, you know, make the best of it. You know, he, he was worried that I was going to get depressed. We didn't know anybody here, uh, a small city. We were used to, you know, going out 
different places in San Diego. And uh, he, of course, got us symphony tickets that, wow, I was floored. Uh, a city the size of Evansville with such an incredible uh, philharmonic orchestra. We were, we were just floored. And uh, we would go to, it was, we moved in in, in uh, the spring. So of course, spring, summer, there's stuff to do everywhere. And we would go to everything. Yeah. And uh, we were at a, a festival and my husband opened a door for a couple to go in and we started talking. You know, they said, thank you. And we started talking and they noticed my husband had an accent and where are you from? And uh, by the end of the conversation, you know, we, we, we told them we can't get over all the farms and, and the countryside. We love this. We're not used to this. And they said, haven't you ever been to a farm? Well, no, we've never been to a farm. They said, we live in a farm. We work at a farm. We own a farm. Come visit us. <laughs> oh, so fun. Wow. You know, in a big city, you yeah. don't get that. You don't get that. So, yeah. Uh, and I and I found a lot of interest. Uh, and I know that uh, when people haven't been exposed to diversity, mm-hmm. and it's always been the same, and all of a sudden, this is coming very fast into Evansville. It could be scary because the unknown is scary. So, you know, for me, my passion is, let me, let me show you. It's not that scary. This is who I am. This is what I can bring for Evansville. And there are so many, you know, I've met so many awesome people from all over the world, people that are new to me. Uh, and wow, you know, I've learned so much from them. I'm, I'm so blessed that, to work at the Evansville Vanderburg Public Library where, you know, my my boss is just such an awesome person that's that says, you know, when I have an idea, she says, go for it, you know, do it. And um, I had an idea to uh, do a, a digital program uh, called uh, Around the World in Evansville. And what I thought, well, you know, I'll choose a country, I'll... I'll interview somebody from that country and they can share whatever they want from their country. And it's a way of giving them a platform, giving them, you know, a voice in our community and a way for our community uh, to learn a a little bit more about, you know, that are the people that are coming to make Evansville really a cool, flourishing place. And, you know, I started right in the middle of the pandemic. You know, that was not too <laughs> yeah, was easy. I never thought it would be so challenging. Yeah, people are thinking, I'm not ready to go around the world. I'm not even ready to go outside of my house. <laughs> right. Right. No, you, you know, how, at, at first I thought, oh, yeah, it's going to be easy because, um, you know, I, I have my pandemic bubble friends that, uh, you know, work from home, take care of themselves, and I can always go interview them. But... You know, after I finished with my pandemic bubble friends, I couldn't knock on anybody's door and say, hey, I know it's the middle of the pandemic. Let me in. It's okay. Let me into your house. So it was a little challenging. And I started interviewing people through um, um, computer calls. And and, uh, I got a way around it or having them, you know, take themselves uh, we did one where uh, people from 12 different countries that live here in Evansville told us uh, what, uh, how they celebrate the New Year's hmm. in their country. And, you know, it was, wow, it was so awesome. Sometimes they don't even celebrate it uh, the same time we do at different times. So just a little, little bits to help people understand, you know, the the diversity that is now in our city. And if you haven't really noticed, hey, all you have to do is go to one of our hospitals and check out the last names of the doctors. Right. You you know, wow. (laughs) They're from 
everywhere. You know, I've met uh, doctors from India, from Pakistan, uh, a good friend of mine from Italy, from um, all over the place, uh, Lebanon. Uh, so, you know, we, it, they're here. They're coming to, to really help our city flourish, and they're bringing cool stuff with them. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very passionate about wanting to share this with, with everyone. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's why you're here today, because we <laughs> have heard that you are working to make Evansville a flourishing place. And yeah. so can you talk a little bit more about maybe other programs or sure. events sure. that you've been a part of? Sure, sure, sure. Um, like I said, I, you know, I've, I've had it easy because I, I work for the library, the Evansville Vanderburg Public Library. And... Uh, I started out, you know, with a story time for kids uh, in Spanish, La Hora del Cuento. And it's evolutionized to, to a bilingual uh, story time. And it does have a focus on, on um, early uh, literacy for Hispanic children. But at the same time, it's exposing other children and their parents to different cultures, you know, to the to a, the Hispanic culture. Uh, for example, uh, I remember one of the uh, Horas del Cuento was uh, a story, I, I read a story on um, the celebration of El Día de los Muertos, that, you know, some people have no clue of what it is the Day of the Dead. I mean, that's so weird. What is it? Is it scary? Oh, no. And so uh, I have a little sidekick called Peppies. And you know, it, I had to bring him in because he'll speak Spanish and I'll speak English. Hmm. And But, you know, you don't have to speak both languages. You can understand because Peppies might say, Maricela, por favor, me enseñas a dibujar una abeja? And I'll say uh, in English, claro, Pepis, um, of course, I I'll help you uh, draw a B. So, you know, the audience knows what Pepis just asked. And Pepis will read the book in Spanish and I'll translate it into English. Or uh, there was this one show, one, one program where um, uh, my brain wasn't working that day when I was recording. And Pepe spoke English and I spoke the Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> the only time Pepe has ever spoken English on our show. I'm sure the kids were shocked. Yeah, <laughs> Wait. yeah he speaks English. He's been holding right. back. Um, but um, we also have uh, another program, uh, Salsa of the Month. And, you know, it's just a, a, a fun little program where every month you I... I give you a recipe to uh, a different salsa, and and I give you a little bit of history on the salsa. And that's a way, a very simple way of sharing my culture. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I'm hoping that, uh, that it's in... It's, it's enlightening people. It's, it's, it's saying, hey, you know, yeah, that's cool. They're just like me. You know, they, they have a family. They love their kids. They, it's not strange. I want, I want to get rid of those negative connotations, you know. Yeah. Where do you think um, that those negative connotations or kind of the, the fear of um, learning about somebody else's culture or even... Uh, approaching somebody who you can just tell like they're from a different background or they're from a different culture. Um, where does, what are some of the barriers, the uneasiness of, um, of engaging other cultures that we're not familiar with? It, it, that's what it is. You know, it, it's, it's being close minded, being afraid of the unknown, but if they just dare to just for a little while to, open up their mind and listen. Just listen to, um, to what's around them. Uh, listen, I, I do outreach at uh, ESL classes. 
And, and can you explain what that is? No, certainly. Uh, English as a know. second language. I've been so very fortunate um, to be invited to these ESL classes in high schools around uh, Evansville. And by the way, Evansville has two incredible jewels. They are magnificent. Two teachers, ESL teachers, Janelle Nicely and Neethi Moore. And you're going to hear more from them because uh, I don't know if you've already heard of them. You probably I've, I've met Neethi before. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're amazing ladies, um, you know, single-handed. They've uh, put up the Festival of Nations. That's mm -hmm. awesome. You can get me talking about that forever. Uh, anyway, I was so lucky to be invited into ESL classes. And there, you know, I, I, I started learning myself. You know, I had never met anyone from uh, the, the Marshall Islands. And I learned that there's quite a healthy community of Marshallese here in Evansville. So I wanted to know more about this. Uh, so it's just learning. It's just opening your mind and, and listening to other people's stories, to letting them share their culture. And if you like it, okay, then back away. But don't close yourself, you know, before uh, you know what they're all about. Yeah, I love that. It sounds like um, you're saying that there's kind of a curiosity that drives that, that whenever we experience... Um, whatever kind of hesitation there might be of like, well, I don't know if there's going to be a uh, misunderstanding because of different oh, languages or backgrounds or customs, or like that. all of those kind of things um, that if you just come at it with a curiosity yeah. and a desire My to discover yeah. um, that that kind of undermines all of the nervousness yeah. and potential awkwardness that we could encounter. We just kind of embrace that with, curiosity. And it sounds like you kind of did that a little bit when you moved to Evansville of like, we've never been on a farm. Yeah, I'd love to come check it out. <laughs> like those kinds of things yeah. um, that having that curiosity leads to, um, you know, d just uh, discovering other people, discovering mm -hmm. other ways of seeing the world and thinking about things that uh, can be really exciting and fun. You, you know, you, you've described something that happened to me here. I Really, the only thing I, I knew about India uh, was that their food is really tasty. It's <laughs> yes. so aromatic and, and, and uh, exotic. Uh, and that the women wear these beautiful garments that I, that I didn't even know what they were called until I moved here. Uh, and I knew a little bit of history, maybe about the silk root. And, but that's about it. I really had never met anybody really close, been close to anybody from, from India. And I met this incredible woman from India that, and, and now I feel, wow, you know, I, I, I want to know more. I, I, teach me. I, I, I need to know. In fact, she was so awesome. Um, the, the very first around the world in Evansville that we filmed was in her house and she was showing us, she showed us uh, about the sari, you know, that beautiful dress that uh, Indian women wear. And she told us history. She, she, she had a display of her sari's out. In fact, um, we even had a model. It was so incredible. It was around the world in Evansville because, um, Gita, my friend, it was from India, and she was showing us all this. The model was from Italy, a, a, a doctor from, from Evansville that was born in Italy, um, and I'm Mexican. So how cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I think a lot of people would be surprised by that. They don't think of Evansville as a very multicultural yeah. place, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, that seems to be uh, true. My wife and I were talking the other day, um, r realizing that we have a lot of friends from Nigeria yeah. who live in Evansville, and they don't necessarily know each other, but we just happen to be connected to a number of different yeah. people from Nigeria. And that, that, even to us, was kind of surprising because we don't think of 
Evansville as necessarily a, a place where people want to come from yeah. all over the world. I think sometimes there's this sort of, um, I don't know, people who grow up here don't see the gems, don't see the, yeah. the value of yeah. what's here and stuff. Um, could, could you kind of speak to um, what, what's the value of um, getting to know other cultures? How do you feel like that has enriched your life? And, and what's kind of the value that, that it offers to other people to just kind of figure out what are the other cultures represented in my city and, and what would it, what would it gain me to, to enter into those spaces with that curiosity that we talked about? I can tell, I can tell you from my personal experience, uh, I am enjoying meeting people from other countries so much. And here in Evansville, you know, not even a big city. I, I lived in New York for five years and I didn't have the friends that I have here. And I am, it's just broadening my horizon. I think it's so cool. I wish that everybody, all the, all the kids in Evansville could be exposed to this because I think that would leave them a legacy of, of peace, really. Mm -hmm. Because once you get to know um, other cultures, you, you get to understand, you, you start respecting mm. uh, other cultures, you start enjoying other cultures. So I, I, you know, wow, if we could expose our children to that, Think of it. What a cool city uh, this would be. Those kids would be the ambassadors. They would be, you know, the they would work in the United Nations. They they could bring world peace if we all do our part. You know, all all of us put our little green of sand. You know, what has it brought to me? Well, you know, last week, for instance, um, it it doesn't cease to amaze me. I was invited to lunch. My friends invited me to lunch to one of my friends' house. And then when I was talking about about it with my husband this morning, uh, hey, we were six ladies sitting around the table. All of us, all of us were from different countries. One was from Turkey, one was from the Czech Republic, uh, from India, from Jamaica, from um, Kentucky, uh, and I'm from Mexico. So, and we were enjoying each other's company. I, I really had not been friends with somebody from Turkey or, for, or from India or, and wow, you know, we, we all have the same values. Mm. We, you know, we're not that strange. Um, we just, eat different foods, spice our stuff differently, <laughs> yeah. have different accents, different color skins. And it's sad if, if, um, if we don't expose most, more people to this, you know, the, like I said, I found a very welcoming Evansville, but, but I know that not everybody, unfortunately is like that. You know, I, I've had friends that have had very, mm, sad experiences you know sure. this day and age can you believe it here in Evansville uh, some young kids uh, went were going to a restaurant they were celebrating uh, and the manager of the restaurant said I'm sorry we don't serve your kind here they were all dark skin what here in Evansville give yeah. me a break I mean that's don't let those few ruin it for you because Evansville is so awesome. It has so much. It's beautiful. You know, I still can't get over it. You, know, you guys are from here, so you see the river. I see the river, and it's, ah. Oh, and, and, and I drive, and I see lakes. Wow. And all the green, the, the four seasons that I had never been exposed to, you know, it was always nice weather and a little nicer, a little cooler, but that was it. And here, you know, I know a lot of people complain about the winter. My husband and I go, oh, wow, did you see it? It snowed. Wow, let's go outside. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Evansville is just such an awesome place. 
Well, I think you touched on uh, saying like we don't enjoy some of the things because we've yeah. been here. And so I feel that way about learning about international cultures and being exposed to that. I, I feel like I've grown up in a bubble here. And so when you tell me about all of these cultures being here, I am a little surprised unless you're like you said, I go to the hospital and then I realize, yeah. um, or even some neighborhoods that some of my friends live in, I see the more multicultural areas. But how how could we get started? People who've been here for so long, mm-hmm. they're not coming in like you did and straight into more of like an international setting. Mm-hmm. How can we find those spaces or get involved mm-hmm. in those areas? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, there you know there are many places that are sharing this with the public, they're sharing their culture. Uh, I mentioned uh, Janelle Nicely Meethi Moore, uh, you know, the, their Festival of Nations. It, have you been to the Festival of Nations? Have. You have to go to the I would love to. <laughs> yeah. Can you describe a little bit yeah, of certainly. what we would find certainly. there? Certainly. Um, and sadly enough, you know, it was, it had to be, well, rethought of during the COVID. They, they sure. did it digitally. They, they um, had their programming uh, on um, their website, but uh, I went to uh, the Festival of Nations uh, a couple of years ago. The library was going. I, I met me. Uh, I, I met Janelle, and and uh, she invited me to go put up a booth for the library. Uh, a friend and I from the library went. We really didn't know what to expect. You know, we, I had never heard of the Festival of Nations. And, and it was at the gymnasium at Bozzi High. I thought it was just a, a little high school get-together. And, you know, we put up our booth. I, I remember I made sandwiches for my friend and for myself because I thought, wow, this is going to be a dinner time. We're going to be so hungry. So I, I made some sandwiches, put them in my purse, and... And we got there. We couldn't believe what we saw. It was amazing. And I, really, next year, you guys have to go see this, experience it for yourself. Um, Janelle and Anithi started really small with their ESL, English as a Second Language classes. And they started, you know, these kids needed a voice, needed to express themselves, uh, to share their cultures. And they're they really got into it, you know, sharing a dance, a song, uh, a costume, uh, food. And they really started getting into it. And their parents started saying, hey, you know, I can bring this or I can make whatever. And yeah. and uh, so it started out in the classroom, in the cafeteria. And it started growing and growing and growing until uh, the gymnasium was filled. They had a huge stage. Uh, and I don't know how these ladies pull it off because everything's free. Uh, and these kids were dressed in costumes and would perform something. You, you could go to the stage and just watch one dance or one song after the other, after the other, and all beautiful, all in different um, costumes. And you could also walk around the booths. I think there were 70 or 80 booths. Some of them um, were made by kids and their families where they wanted to share a little bit about their culture. So you'd go to the booth, they'd talk to you about their culture. They maybe would bring some artifact, you know, they brought with them from their country. And most of them would share a little sample of their food. By the time you finish going through the the 80 booths, you were, I mean, food was coming out your ears. You had (laughs) so much because everybody wanted you to have a taste of, of their home. Yeah. It was so awesome. And, and, you know, there are a lot of uh, restaurants around here that said, Hey, we want in on this. We want to share our food too. And so you got a little taste of everything. Uh, And they've grown so much that they were actually going to, uh, have their festival uh, this past, this year at uh, the Old National Events Plaza, and uh, unfortunately, it had to be canceled. And you know, these women are amazing. They do this for free. You can come in and and yeah. learn about other countries. You can um, you know, 
see these amazing dances, uh, costumes, and eat. And well, I, I hope that after the pandemic, um, they they can still share that with us. Now, also, uh, there's an international club that I belong to, and uh, I think. I don't remember how many countries are represented, but it's it's insane. I mean, Thailand, yes. Malaysia, yes, we've got that. Uh, from everywhere, Colombia, Russia, everywhere. Uh, and it's a pretty cool place. Uh, and we meet at different homes uh, because it's such a large group now in Evansville. We... we uh, maybe get together all of us uh, twice a year uh, but they're here you know uh, yeah. yeah yeah that's and, awesome and they're bringing really cool things to Evansville uh, they're helping our our city really flourish uh, I know my my husband where he works at Sobic at one of the bigger companies here and uh, wow you know he talks to me about the, the scientists there well, a lot of those scientists are from other countries, and they're really expanding. You know, they're 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 making stuff, creating stuff. The engineers that come, wow! You know, they're bringing something cool into our city, mm-hmm. and it's not just their knowledge; it's their culture, it's their food. Um, there's a, a around the world in Evansville, that digital program um, at EVPL that you can watch. A little commercial here. Uh, mm-hmm. they, it, they always uh, open at, uh, their premiere is on our Facebook page, but then they go live on our uh, YouTube channel page. And there's going to be one coming out uh, in June uh, where, you know, I, I just thought it was awesome. Uh, it's June and July. There's one, two parts to it, where uh, I have some friends talk to us about Indian cuisine, and you know there are places here where you can go to the market and buy uh, the spices, and, and there's just a whole bunch of products. But you know, I I'm very adventurous. You know, I've I've gone into these places, and, but I I don't know what to buy. You know, I. I I go aisle and another aisle, and sometimes I'll buy stuff. I don't even know how to use it. Yeah, right. You no, know, I give it my twist, and, and I create something. But I went with my friend to this store, and she pointed out, you know, this is this, and we use it for this and this. And mm. wow, it was amazing. So you want to get on board with this? We'll watch around the world in events. Yeah. Yeah. That'll expose, um, you know, all these cultures to you. So I love that, uh, you know, you kind of came to Evansville and you haven't been in Evansville very long, but you've quickly just through your curiosity and sense of adventure, like you've taken the initiative to kind of seek out other um, cultures that are represented here and to really create spaces where other people can do the same. And so I was wondering, could you talk to us a little bit just about that um, initiative and and just the uh, initiative of I'm going to bring something good to the city. I'm gonna I'm gonna even recognize something that's good in the city and create opportunities for more people to experience it. Because I think sometimes the mentality that we were referring to earlier of like, well, Evansville's not a very multicultural or a very cultured place at all. If I want that, I need to go to a bigger city or Wrong. somewhere We've far got away. It. We've got right. it here. <laughs> and so can you talk a little bit about just that change in mindset or the different mindset that you have of, of I'm going to, there, there is, there are exciting, good, great, wonderful things to be experienced here in Evansville. I'm going to seek them out. And not only that, I'm going to create opportunities for more people to experience that and share in that. I, I mean, the only thing I could answer to that is, um, I like to share and I've been having such a great time. I want to share it with you, with you, with everybody. So really that's what it comes down to that, that I've 
been having the time of my life. You know, I haven't been able to travel lately, so it's like really traveling, knowing, being exposed to all this, it's so awesome. Uh, so it's just, I mean, it's very simple. You know, I, I wish I could say something more elaborate, but the truth <laughs> is I, I want to share the experiences I'm having. I want to share sure. the fun I'm having. Uh, and that's, you know, my very simple way. The only way I know how <laughs> yeah. uh, would be uh, to share it through uh, the digital programming at the library. And and we are sharing it with a lot of people because, you know, uh, it's 20,000 people every month that, that see this program. Wow. And after hearing, you know, people hearing your podcast, I'm sure it's going to double. I hope so. <laughs> but, you know, I think you've picked up at least two, uh, there you two yes. more viewers. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just, you know, the way I've enjoyed what I'm experiencing here. And I want I want to share it with everybody. I yeah. Mean, that's, that's. I love the, that. That's great. Um, having a passion. Uh, loving and enjoying that passion and then in, inviting others to participate in it as well. That's that's really cool. Yeah. Thank you. Well, one of our questions was, where do you see hope in the area that you care about? And it sounds like you have a lot of hope in this area already okay. that you've been sharing with us. Yeah. But can, do you see any changes from the last couple of years that you've been here that we've just moved forward in? I think so. I, I, I feel... There's an interest. I, I feel you know, when when we've gotten invited to a church that uh, that heard, hey, you know, so and so is from this country, and then I have a friend from that country, and uh, and when we've gone to the a church gathering, and 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 um, a lot of those people there are had never been exposed to this. It's like, oh, really? Hmm. Uh, and you do what? And, and, and But I see that interest. You know, I, I really, really see the interest. And, and, and I love it when, you know, when I can share it. Even, even the taste of whatever I make and, and people say, whoa, uh, we, we had, Two three years ago at the library, we had uh, celebrated uh, Dia del Niño, El Dia, uh, they call it here, and we wanted to do something special for children. This was before pandemic hit, and so we uh, we did a, a, a tostada bar. Okay, so. The, the kids went in there, and so the parents, some of them had never tasted a tostada. Maybe they tasted Taco Bell tostadas. <laughs> um, We're not going to count those. No. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, they looked at all this, and, and I even made a pico de gallo, you know, kid-friendly pico de gallo. Uh, and we told them, you build it like this and like this, and you can build your own. And, you know, they... At first, they were like, "But what's that?" What, you know, that would be my kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this doesn't it look like amazing. a chicken nugget. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the parents told me, you know, I, I thought my kid wasn't going to like this. This is going to be tostada night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every week I'm going to have a tostada night, and this is healthy stuff. This is cool stuff. So. Um, I think there is an interest, and in, in, and I really get excited when when I see um, people saying, "Hey, I, I want to taste that. I want to know about that. Could you tell me how do you make this?" I love it. If you ever see me on the street, ask me. I'll answer. Um, I love to share. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to looking up those salsa recipes that you were <laughs> yeah. talking yeah, girl. about. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then I do have one more question. Yes. It might be the very cliche question, but. Favorite Mexican restaurant in town? Oh, La Campirana. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Uh, it, it, that is definitely uh, something that I would cook at home. 
so good yeah. to know. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's great. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for yes, taking the you. time to talk with us. It's, it's been, been really enjoyable. And I hope that our listeners will uh, take that step to seek out some of these different opportunities that you mentioned and also just to pay attention for where those yeah. opportunities might yeah. present themselves in their own life to have that curiosity, ask somebody about their culture, their background, and have their horizons broadened, as you say, yes. and uh, sort of travel the world without even yeah. having to, yeah. to leave our city. So. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really enjoyed this. Thank yes. you so yes. much. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. As well. well, that was really fun uh, yes. talking to Maricela about uh, a lot of different cultures represented here in Evansville. Uh, I know I've said this multiple times already, but that's just not something that I feel like Evansville is known for or that people right. think of uh, yeah. or even realize is an aspect of Evansville. I've heard that as a critique growing up right. even was just that there's no diversity here. And I love that as we have been talking about racial unity this whole year, um, just this different side to it. Right. Uh, it's not just a, a black and white issue. It can yes. be, uh, there's so many cultures represented here. And so that's a huge part of our Evansville culture. Right. And it is true that, um, you know, in terms of cultural representation, that might not be a large percentage of the population, but I think that whenever we're intentional about creating spaces where different cultures are celebrated and we can be more exposed to those different cultures and kind of learn uh, how different people celebrate and foods that they eat and things like that, that it kind of creates opportunities um, for us to learn from each other, but also that it creates an environment in our city where people from different cultures and all different backgrounds feel more welcome and appreciated and, yes. and seen in our community, yeah. you know. And I just loved her commentary on that it's people are afraid of the unknown, but just her approach was more like ask them about their food, ask them yeah. about their holidays. You know, there's sometimes there's that barrier of just I don't even know what to talk to them about. Right. But food, holidays, those things right. come up all the time. And as someone who's lived in a different country, I was so hungry for people to ask me yeah. about my culture. And if if they would have done that or people who did open that door, I was so excited to talk to them and develop those relationships. And so I think knowing that for here, just just ask them about what food they like to eat yeah. or ask them for a recipe from back home, you know. I think right. that's those are very easy ways to kind of open those doors of relationships. Right. Yeah, and I think if they give you an answer up front that still seems unfamiliar, um, just continue to ask and say, oh, tell, I'm not familiar with that. Tell me more about that. Um, yeah. And yeah, it gets a, gets a conversation going. And I think in those conversations, you begin to um, identify a lot of the things that are sort of universal among all People, like you said, yeah. everybody eats food and enjoys good food. Yeah. Everybody celebrates holidays. And so we do those things in different ways, but um, talking about the different ways we do them kind of brings to the surface that we have a lot of things in common and there's a lot of things to celebrate. And I think it's a really beautiful thing for our city whenever we begin to do that because uh, it just creates a richer, deeper sense of community among neighbors when we can celebrate the things that are different about each one of us, but also celebrate the things that we all have in common and kind of pursue those things together. Everybody, everybody wants a place to belong. Everybody yes. wants to be able to uh, celebrate together and enjoy the good moments together and to have people around them who are going to bear the struggles as well and the the not so joyous moments. Um, and so, yeah, there's there's just something about those multi multicultural spaces that I think brings that out in a different way or helps you to think about those things in a different light. Yeah, it's really I cool. love that. Well, hey, we would love to hear from you. If you're from a different, it could be a different city. I, I do recall she said, 
that everyone was from a different country around the table, and she listed Kentucky yeah. as one of those countries. Kentucky is a different country. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so even if you aren't from Evansville, we would love to know where you, our listeners, are from, uh, maybe originally, or maybe you don't even live in Evansville right now, but we'd love to hear from you. You can email us. Also, if you have like salsa recipes like Maricela does or any other type of thing, please email us those. We could even share them. That's right. Uh, you can email us at info at or follow us on social media and 